Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Violet Dawn. It's a 4x6, painted this a couple weeks ago. Um, good one for the members area to check out. Just took like an hour. A lot of these minis don't take very long. Um, yeah, anyway, you can get to that link underneath this video if you're interested in that. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive, like uh, six bucks a month, and you have access to, I think, close to 200 live videos where you're you're in the studio with me, you're in the trenches, and we're doing it together, you know. Um, so why did I just do these lines around the outside? Well, here's a tip for you, just right off the bat. If you're doing little minis like this, you want to make sure you don't put anything too close to the edge, because if you're going to pop them in a frame, most frames eat up about, they could eat up an eighth to a quarter inch. Usually I try and make a mark that is around an eighth of an inch. It doesn't have to be exact. It's The most important thing about it is that it kind of reminds you not to put anything too close to the edge. Bring things in a little bit. So um, Now I've done this uh, scene before uh, about, I want to say two years ago. And there I did a golden version of it. And I had, had actually had this... The reference I used for this composite at that time, um, which is sort of a purpley blue sort of take on things. Um, now, and there is a video or two in the members area where I show my technique for turning um, black and white images. Like this is based on an old pictorialist photo from the turn of the uh, 20th century. Uh, how I can uh, use the gradient map um, function in Photoshop to map colors onto black and white images. It's quite a cool technique. It's it's limited in some ways, but uh, combined with your human imagination, it can be just the thing to get you into uh, turning a black and white into um, something that's colorful. And it worked real well. It works great with things like sunsets and things where you know everything's going to be gold or red or what have you. Um, when you start getting into like like you could do really weird stuff with it. I won't get into all that right now, but um, the color I'm sort of leaning on here is some Dio, uh, excuse me, Dioxozine purple. I have like a permanent block on that. A uh, good friend of the channel, uh, Rich, has done his best to coach me on that, and um, it's it's your voice in my head, Rich, that uh, stops me from saying Dioxozine. It's Dioxozine, Diox. Anyway, it's a great purple. I've had people um, argue with me on the channel about this um, in the past. Uh, basically saying, oh, you can mix a uh, Dioazine, just mix some, uh, you know, some red with some blue and maybe a little bit of uh, burger number. They probably don't talk like that, but no, come on, guy or gal. If that worked, why would I buy a pricey tube of uh, dioxazine purple? It is not replaceable. It's not mixable. It's not. You can get a good purple. Um, you can get, like with my basic palette, uh, without the uh, diox purple. I have several reds there. I have uh, alizarin crimson, which is a cool transparent red. I have cadmium red, which is a warmer uh, opaque red. Both of those will give me some kind of purple, but neither one of those purples will equate to um, Diox purple um, with any blue, frankly. So that's why it's on my palette. It holds that place, and it's a cool purple. It's quite strong. Um, and there was a I did a survey about four years ago, uh, just looking for good purple on my palette, and I tried um, several of the purples out there available, and the uh, the Diox has been there ever since. And what's great about Diox is on the palette, um, it doesn't dry all that quickly. So it's not like purple's a big part of my process. Um, it is certainly is in this scene. I'm really leaning heavy into it. Also, uh, like the many of the blues, the Diox um, doesn't reveal its purple identity fully until some little bit of white gets in it. And that's in a mix as well. So say you mix it with this and that, you can't really see its true nature until a little bit of white is added to that mix. Um, it's similar to Thalo Blue or Ultramarine Blue. 
almost any of the blues are darker and don't really review reveal their their uh, their blueness or in this case purpleness in the case of the uh, the diox but I highly recommend it um, yeah it's it's it goes for a long time too I mean you buy a tube you'll have it for years you know um, it's very handy now we're we're purple in my process it's not that big a deal I will bring it into shadow areas at, at times depending on the the reference and the colors in the reference um, but mostly I'd say it gets its uses in like say dawn scenes or sunsets um, and there it's absolutely vital for giving me a type of purple that I can't mix so and that's really uh, how you should approach all the colors on your palette don't have a bunch of colors on your palette that uh, you don't use or that you don't need um, and how do you know what you need and you uh, uh, to use and not use well um, the solution to that is to start with a limited palette and uh, uh, I have put these videos up on on the channel to uh, available to everyone I think most of them are in the members area right now um, where I demonstrate, I do demos with the limited palette, but I can give you kind of a blow by blow right now, just verbally. Um, so, a good limited palette might be, you know, Thalo Blue or Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, um, I, Cadmium Yellow, Titanium White, and Ivory Black. Now, some guys will, uh, or gals, will uh, give you a limited palette where they replace the um, Ivory Black with Thalo Green and they'll mix the Alizarin Crimson with the Thalo to get a super dark, um, nearly black color. Uh, I like black and I paint in a tonalist fashion, so black is fine. In fact, I use black to kill the sort of uh, overt intensity that I would have got in the uh, Diox purple without it. I can see the black kind of humming through there. So I predominantly use black as a color killer, you know. In the limited palette scenario, it's vital for getting a really good natural green. Um, I mean, you can struggle along by making greens with your yellow and your blue and then adding tiny bits of red uh, to try and get them feel natural, but it's it's more way more of a struggle than just starting with a black and a yellow, which is the, my, my basic green that's on my palette. Um, is uh, I usually use acrylide yellow and ivory black. Um, and that gives me a really, really great middle middle of the road sort of green. It looks very natural. Um, it's easy to tint in a bunch of different ways. But getting back to why is a limited palette a good thing to do? Well, um, because especially if you're starting out, you don't really know much about painting. You don't know much about pigments. So in the process of struggling to match colors with your limited palette, which you'll see how tiny, tiny amounts of color will make, you know, changes big changes sometimes to the color you're trying to mix it can be a little frustrating because you go oh that doesn't look like what I'm trying to mix but if you use it anyway you'll see that you have a painting that has a built-in harmony um, and as you add in colors so what I in fact this is all covered in my book which you know I'm gonna have some printed copies for sale on my website I've decided it's gonna be a bit expensive because the shipping from here in New Zealand is, is quite expensive but as soon as I have some in my hands um, I'll be announcing on the channel what the price is and I'll have a link and we can go from there I wanted to do PDFs but um, and I, I'm, I'm totally trying to uh, uh, seek out an international publisher right now and one thing I've come across um, is that if you've self-published already they're not that interested so I don't see that as uh, by self-publishing I mean you know take getting your book on Amazon selling PDFs on your website I don't see making a few physical copies as being a, a major contradiction uh, in fact my first run is only going to be 50 copies so anyway back into the limited power well, I cover all this in the book that's why I brought up the book yeah it's all covered um, so you know what do you do from add uh, limited palette you're getting tired of mixing um, an equivalent to burnt sienna you're getting quiet tired 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 of mixing an equivalent to yellow ochre uh, or raw umber or any of the colors that you you can mix equivalents but it's slower it's painstaking well if you find that you're mixing that equivalent again for the 20th time and say well it's time to buy a tube of yellow ochre I know I'll use that it's time and I know how I want to use it and this gets to the point that I started at a few minutes back you know 
how do you know what colors you need? Well, you start with a limited palette and then you add on bit by bit. So every color that's on my palette, and I think I'm up to like, it's like 15 to 17 colors. They all have a purpose. They all are, I, they're all have a job to do and they have a reason they're on my palette. And people always want to know about the colors of my palette. They want to know what's up and why it's there and what color I'm using, da 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 because it, let's face it, figuring out the color aspect of painting is one of the di the difficult parts. You know, they're, they're all kind of difficult, but we I don't want to, you know, discourage you here. Um, it's a struggle, though, and it's a struggle that's worth it, if you ask me. Um, anyway, uh, ideally, your palette should end up being quite subjective. The palette uh, and colors that you like won't be the palette of colors that I like, you know. So um, start with the basics, the uh, the yellow, the red, the blue. Um, from there, I add in burnt sienna because I'm a landscape painter. So burnt sienna, yellow ochre, those are great colors to have for landscape painting. Uh, raw umber. Um, with that, I can do a heck of a lot. That phthalo green, I'd add that in pretty early on too because that gives me a whole range of cool greens and things that I can do there. Uh, with it in conjunction with the alizarin crimson, you know um, From there. What do we do? We add a uh, oh a cad orange Wouldn't take me long to be missing that, you know uh, Cad red cad reds very useful for throwing in greens and doing other things with um, Well, we almost said every color on my palette at this point aren't we I can't really even think of what I'm missing. Yeah, uh, we we'll just go through it. Uh, titanium white. I use titanium buff a lot now, but you know, if I had to, I'd just keep using the same old titanium white. Um, cad yellow, uh, yellow ochre, uh, raw umber, uh, Mike's green, which I already described to you, and then we got the uh, the cadmium orange, the cadmium red, the burnt sienna. Uh, burnt umber is a color I like a lot, but I can get that with the burnt uh, sienna and the and the raw umber pretty easy you know um, a lizard crimson uh, permanent green light oh thalo green permanent green light permanent green lights I use it all the time but you know I could make it real easy from the cad yellow and the thalo green if I needed to because that's all that's in it it's actually in the permanent green light you get the acrylide uh, yellow mixed with thalo green but you get something pretty dang close with the uh, thalo and the uh, cad um, and I don't usually have the acrylide yellow on my palette on its own. I use it to make my mic screen, um, and I use a ton of that mic screen. Yeah. So anyway, we're getting kind of close to the end. It's a you know a little bit of a rambly video, but hopefully you picked up a few bits about color and you enjoyed watching me paint this. Check out the members area. This will be for sale in my store. A uh, real good price, uh, just maybe around 120 bucks U.S. something like that. So. Oh, I love this little painting, and uh, I've got some other real good ones coming for you uh, real soon. A couple that I managed to fix that uh, were on the edge. Um, and I'll be happy to share those uh, my thoughts on that process with you real soon coming up. Uh, check out the members area. Leave me a like. Leave me a comment, please, if you could. Just say thanks, Mike. Uh, that's a good enough comment for me. Anyway, until I come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble. And God bless you and your family.